Frank in the Netherlands writes to me, he says, Hi Paul, Frank here from Amsterdam. I have a question about audio signal isolators that you always see in those fancy wooden boxes that prevent your cables from noise that you don't want into your system or getting into your speakers. My question is, is it really rocket science what's put into those fancy speaker cable boxes? Or is it possible to make it by yourself if you are handy enough with electronics? Because I see many on the market, but all cables with a fancy box aren't cheap and are too expensive for me to open <laughs> and just for a look. Because if I had the money tree in my backyard, I would probably have demolished already a couple of them just out of interest. Okay, so if we're talking about the same thing, I haven't seen it a whole lot anymore. Years ago, especially in speaker cables, but I think both MIT and Transparent had it on interconnects as well. But on speaker cables, it was quite a big deal, especially both MIT and Transparent <coughs> had these big boxes that went along with it. And inside those boxes were, I've taken them apart. <laughs> And what's inside is a series of inductors and capacitors. And I don't know if you could just do that yourself. You'd have to, because look, what you're, what you're trying to do, what they are trying to do, as best I understand it, is smooth out some of the impedance uh, points along the way. If you think about, especially in a speaker cable, and hooked up to a loudspeaker, especially a dynamic loudspeaker, the impedance is bouncing all over the place. And cables like to have a constant impedance to go into. So if you look at, oh, say a digital cable or a, a pro cable, if it's set up for a standard of say 600 ohms, it likes to see that steady 600 ohms because there's reflections, there's all kinds of things going on inside that cable, more than just delivering the straight <coughs> excuse me, more than just delivering the straight signal between the two, there's a lot of interactions going on. And as best I understand it from Bruce and Karen years ago when they were, and maybe they still do, I haven't kept up with their companies, but their goal was to try and even out those reflections and uh, to damp them and, and control the constant impedance so that the amp and the speakers could see that without affecting the frequency response of the signal. And they were pretty effective. They sounded pretty good. How they did that, I'm not very good at designing filters and things. So here's a better way for you to go. Today, you can buy programs like LT Spice or probably, I mean, I haven't looked into these modeling programs uh, recently, but there are some that are very inexpensive. There's probably some free ones on that where you can model, uh, and we use a multi, we use LT Spice when we first design, whether it's a complex electronic piece or whether it's a very simple passive piece, we model it in these modeling programs. And they have signals and you can tell it, you know, dynamically, they work dynamically. H here's your load and you can set it all up to be a dynamic load that mimics a loudspeaker and this one could mimic a power amplifier. And then in between, you could, for no money at all, screw around with L's and C's and R's and see if you can't come up with something that really smooths out that, that uh, impedance uh, uh, curve. And you might find something, and then if it works, then go down to the store, buy your little coils and stuff, and make your own thing and see how it sounds. Best advice I got. Okay. Hope that helps. <laughs> Take it easy. Bye.